Hello, this is the Part 5B segment in the series of liquefied petroleum gas cargo operations. This is a continuation of Part 5A for loading cargo operations discussions. In Part 5A, we have discussed cargo to load estimations, computations, and nominations of quantity. Hence, in this next sequence of Part 5B is the same discussions except that we will be expounding it to a plan for loading, confirming nominations, considering all factors, and finally, loading simulations and demonstrations so that we could get you closer to the real thing. Planning for loading cargo operations. It seems easy to see and looking at by the pictures or images as shown, but in reality, it's not like filling a bucket of water and that's just how it is. So. We dive in deeper and let's get into something more clearer and well laid out. In the previous uh, video segment, we have discussed about initial cargo requests received. However, an initial inquiry is just the tip of the whole entirety of loading operations. Hence, continuous correspondence to both operation department and our charters if a contract is in place or attained. Such inquiries for cargo estimates, limitations, voyage time, provisions and other requests has to be repeated until the cargo is fixed. Now, take note that over time new inquiries may be received. For all we know, LPG trading is very mercurial or dynamic where such changes may occur at any given time from the type of cargo or destinations of load or discharge port, charterer and receiver requirements or quantity nominations or even cancellations can be expected. Planning ahead has to be based on many factors considering unforeseen or given elements such as load port or multiple load port, discharge port for one or more, draft restrictions, weather zone and route, or ETA and load port. On top of that, these important elements are always part of the plan such as taking into account your bunker fuel, diesel, lubes, stores, and water on board at the time of calculations, bunker requirements for round trip or to discharge ports, bunker on arrival in discharge and most importantly, volume capacity available for cargo. This includes considering different grades. In effect, it may change such as instead of loading one grade, where in previous examples, we have set propane as our cargo. Whilst it could be two grade like propane and butane, or a mixture of both, or even totally entirely new such as chemical gas cargos. Finally, for cargo nomination of quantity, the most important factor is the loading temperature and density where your maximum cargo is important, especially with full loading orders. A separate discussion will be given for stability, cargo stowage and calculations with different scenarios will be uploaded very soon. Now let me clarify some points. I am not suggesting you to be anxious. With these details on hand, you must think as if you have completed loading operation. Meaning. You have to jump to a conclusion or scenario like throwing out questions into yourself as if the officer in charge. For example, question 1. Did the ship met all required criteria in the loading orders? Question 2. Did the ship loaded the required quantity? And question 3. What if the cargo nominated quantity is mentioned as 51,590 tons and we end up loading 51,560 tons? With this in mind, the chief officer anticipate condition, for example, the loading cargo temperature might be warmer despite the terminal says loading temperature is at fully refrigerated and the final densities could be lesser. Reality checks, it is always expected in most cases. Lastly, and most importantly, check if the cargo nomination also stated MOLOO, M-O-L-O-O, or MOLSO, M-O-L-S-O. Then the vessel is still within the complied range of loaded quantity against the nominated quantity. As shown in this statement, MOLOO, more or less in owner's option, MOLSO means more or less in ship's option. Now let's expound and explain you this MOLO and MOLSO so that you'll get a better understanding. In this example, let's assume your nominated quantity is about 51,750 tons and the charterer's contract clause is stipulated is plus or minus 5% MOLO or more or less in owner's option. Let's also assume that the vessel is loading in summer load line zone. 
and for convenience, we use a value of 12.0 meters as our summer load line in this model ship. So, if we do a basic calculation here, we can see that 5% of 51,750 is 2,587.5 tons. Hence, we can load more than 51,750 to a quantity of plus 5% which is 54,337.5 tons and at the same time we can also load less than 5% which is 49,162 tons to sum it up we could actually stay in between 54,337.5 tons to 49,162 tons that's basically what is that stipulation of plus or minus 5% however let's check first the loading computer here our present condition with regards to draft and displacement you could see that our midship drop has a value of 11.88 meters which means to say by load lines regulations the baseline basis is at midship drop so if you are following me our summer displacement particulars allows us 12.0 meters then the cargo loaded in this exercise is well within the nominated cargo but we need to simulate it so that we can prove it else from there we need to adjust accordingly thus let's go back to the loading computer we simulate a value to maximize it close to 12.0 meter, which at this point is about 11.94 meters, where it yields a maximum cargo of 52,089.218 metric tons. With this figure shown, the initial nomination of 51,750 tons will not be able to accommodate plus 5% molo O, because it's obvious that we will exceed our drop limitations. Hence, this was intended to show you the logic of computation. On this basis, what we could nominate instead is to subtract 5% from the summer load line drop displacement. And so, from the value, we could now apply both 5% plus or minus as the charterers has stipulated. But remember, take note that a full calculation of such includes your allowances for fuel or bunker consumption based on length of voyage, the destination, and load lines, and even water and some provision which we normally term it as deductibles. Should you wish to know more further about it, I have an ebook included in this uh, description of this video. You'll find the download link for the Mercs. So after completing all the necessary uh, computations or calculations required, then we can now proceed for the planning for loading operations. So in this case, we need to gather all the data possible from all sources. And as you can see in this uh, display, we should confirm it through guide to port entry, agent, terminal, and of course our operation department and through charterer correspondence. And with the following list of, uh, of data that we need to verify, like for example, check allowable trim or draft in load and discharge port, and so on and so forth, including the rate of loading. You'll be able to understand and analyze this properly. Post the video and just try to read it on its line. Now let's finalize our loading plan. Basically, a loading plan takes place while the vessel is in transit, that is before arrival. Storage planning such as distribution of cargo in tanks, sounding, and allage for stopping. As you can see here in our loading computer, we have inputted some values to be able to see and check our stability requirements, including the dynamics of stresses such as your so-called bending moments and shear forces. In this way, we will be able to see how the ship behaves while the vessel is loading in ports. So as you can see here, we can see the plan and the simulated value based on the cargo nominated. Now, I, I do not need to mention everything. Check with your SIGTO guidelines, uh, the LPG uh, handling principles of so the latest edition of SIGTO, and of course, most especially your ship's manual accordingly. So in this way, you'll be able to see the whole entirety of such preparation with regards to loading operations and other related cargo operations on board LPG ships. So this uh, discussion is just basically a brief summary of loading cargo operations. Now let's do some demonstration. As an SOP, conditions and setting of cargo relief valves must be checked respectively. The relic function plan has been lined up, level alarms tested, and many other safety factors such as line pressure test to its maximum working pressure. Because liaising with the terminal, say for example, if more than one cargo are carried, then segregation has to be put in place, utilizing spool pieces and isolating valves, blank plunges, 
and land uploading pipe accordingly, including all associated equipments for the relic function plant servicing its cargo respectively. Loading are carried out at a standard using a vaporator line or commissioning the ship's relic function plant and even both. If the terminal has agreed to use the vapor line, then in most cases, it is an advantage for the ship's side for the reason that tank pressure and loading rate are a lot easier to control and stabilize. Whilst if loading is done without a vapor return facility, vapors generated under these conditions, the loading rate is dependent to the ship's relic function plant capacity and hence loading rate is directly affected. In most cases, terminal will have the vapor return connected but only used for emergency. Now let's proceed with some simulation. Assuming that uh, we have two liquid lines to be connected, so we take off the blanks from the manifold lines and since we are port side alongside and also at the same time we take off the blanks for the vapor return line. Now let's assume that the uh, terminal did not agree for us to have a vapor line um, return but they have connected it anyway in case for emergency. So now let's assume that all these chicksan are connected, connected or liquid line number one and liquid line number two while the vapor return is just in place for emergency. So we let the bulb uh, just close for the moment and we just go to the lining up. So we go to the ma main cargo pipeline. So as you can see we are here in the main cargo pipeline. You could see that the vapor lines top view are all in common. Now this would give you a more stabilized uh, pressure especially when you are loading with the same cargo for all of these tanks which is one two three and four and of course leveling bulbs are all open so if we trace the line we have also the condensate returns line up since we will be using the relic function plant as mentioned earlier that there is a vapor line connected but it's only for emergency so hence the plant will be utilized as well so we have to be done this in the first place spool pieces are connected as well so that we could utilize all three plants 1, 2, and 3 in any time at any moment. So looking at this view, we could line up actually all the systems. So let's just ascend this and with no much spark there do. Alright, assuming I'll be loading first on tank number 1, which is open now. That's the drop line on top view. And I'll open this one. It's open as well. It's coming from here and we trace the line. So if we go back to manifold, and then we could open this one and open also the other line. So that it goes 1 and 4 and 2 and 3 system. So all we need to do now is open the manifold line bulbs main bulbs as soon as we get the signal or the approval from the terminal and that of course the loading operation will begin now take note that even though we have done the cooling down operations in the first place before this uh, the tanks uh, bottom uh, especially are already cooled down to about uh, close to its uh, refrigerated temperature say for example propane is about negative 42 and the uh, top um, and middle uh, Temperatures are also close to it and like uh, they, we have a top temperature of about uh, negative 20 while in the middle is about negative uh, 35 or something or even close to negative uh, 38. So on the bottom and of course the wall of the containment system uh, has already cooled down temperature. But the lines, uh, the cargo is coming from the terminal and so we need to cool down also as well the lines so that you won't have any thermal uh, shocks and at the same time there won't be any thermal stresses. You could uh, imagine that the initial stage of flow of liquid creates a lot of vaporization especially the liquid is running through a pipeline and that means to say we have friction and also the arc of nature which is warm temperature from the ambient temperature outside will go to the colder uh, areas so meaning to say the law of thermodynamics is always at hand and that is something that we cannot avoid so Hence, with this, you are expecting an immediate flash of vaporization even though the tank has been cooled down. Now, let's just say that we are all set and ready to receive the cargo. And hence, uh, we have given the uh, terminal the uh, signal or the communication to proceed. And hence, we open the bulbs to start the loading. Now, in this case, of course, we will be requesting a slow rate for the cooling down of the line so that it would not have any thermal shocks and that we will be able to stabilize the pressure in the lines in the system so let's just say that we have open one line first and eventually we can open the next one so that we'll be able to 
cool down all the lines and of course now in your cargo tanks we are going to tanks number one you could see that there's a abrupt change of pressure and even temperature even if it's cooled down immediately and as shown in this uh, animation you could see that the initial splash of liquid in the bottom even that the tanks are cooled down already as i mentioned a couple of times it will create steel vaporization so now we are loading at cargo tank number one as you can see in this uh, main uh, cargo pipelines overview and concurrently the cargo engineer or gas engineer should have already lined up and uh, started the relay Q function plant at the same time but uh, in this demonstration i'll just show you i'll just show it to you anyway so of course we're gonna have to make sure that the cooling of the system is uh, now lined up so i'm gonna open it up make it a little bit faster let's uh, just use the Number one plant, number one plant purse, and put a little bit of lube oil. Switch on the lube oil uh, pump, and of course uh, we start the cooling water. Overboard uh, discharge is open. We also open up the R22 number one plant condenser, and of course the other bulbs. So as you can see, this is as you can see this is the sea chest. Uh, we are now drawing in water from the sea and through here, and then it sends their inlet and then outlet inlet and outlet and of course it goes back and overboard so now we can run the pump so we have now a cooling water it goes to the r22 and the lube oil so hence for the lubrication and for the cooling of the compressors we can start also the glycol pump system and there you go so now we can go to plant number one and of course you can see that it's open already for the bulbs and we could line up the r22 open some bulbs so make sure that all bulbs are open so once uh, we have lined up the R22, then we can run it so that it would stabilize. And as you can see, we have suction for the R22, set it to 50%. We have discharge pressure and then goes to condenser. The R22 or uh, refrigerant is now condensed. And of course, as soon as the level of uh, liquid uh, received is on the right uh, level, then the uh, expansion valve opens. Now, as soon as the uh, refrigeration system for the R22 stabilizes, and we have now a good supply of uh, coolant for the cargo condenser now we line up for the bulbs for suction inlet and outlet of your compressor and of course it goes to the intercooler as well and now of course the non-return discharge and this of course will open eventually once a level of liquid uh, condensed in the cargo condenser so let's just assume that uh, it's now okay and we run it up so it runs and as i have uh, discussed in the relic function plan because first stage second stage and of course the other related uh, factors about thermodynamics with regards to relic function plan system so as soon as the level is filled and then it opens right so that's the system that and we have to go back to cargo pipelines and make sure that uh, the condensed uh, return are open as well i mean in this area right take note that the top spray can still be utilized once the pressure has stabilized as you can see during the cooling the top spray is utilized to cool down the tanks hence when the liquid sprays to the tanks it, it draws in all the heat enthalpy from the material structure of the cargo containment and thereby cools down the tank but at the same time because of the latent heat of vaporization it creates a lot of pressure while in loading once the pressure has stabilized the top spray is actually utilized in the the, in the opposite way it's basically used as a condensing medium the cargo itself condenses the vapor that is boiling off from the liquid cargo so this vapor will turn back into liquid and since it turns back into liquid the pressure will go down and of course at the same time since the relic function plant is commissioned pressure and temperature will keep going down i mean to say temperature will become colder as the pressure goes down and so as soon as pressure stabilizes and also the uh, relic function plant operating is uh, just in the uh, optimum uh, performance while at the same time monitoring the levels of the liquid then we can uh, start also uh, loading into the other tanks so we can open load lines here for number three tanks and eventually we can open the rest of the tanks like number four or number two that depends on how you plan for your uh, stability in terms of your stresses with regards to shear forces and bending moments and trim and of course and the least now at the same time concurrently your deballasting take place and at the same time you monitor the level of the tanks for its uh, sides of the tanks and this is where your so-called leveling bulb takes uh, goes into the picture and you just stagger them accordingly 
same time as, as you stagger the liquid levels in this tank. So when you finalize a uh, topping up, you would know which comes first and that which tank will come uh, last as you of course uh, slow down the loading rate till you finish to completion.